Hey investors, Dave Hathaway. I see on YouTube a common question of how to buy and rent houses for a profit. So I wanted to answer that question that is on people's minds. We're outside one of our rentals. We're just finishing it up and I'm gonna give you a three-step process here. Number one is knowing your market. So super important to know the market that you wanna purchase in. Even if you're using a mentor, it's gonna come down to you. You are the one that is gonna be holding on to that property, either selling it for a flip or holding it as a buy and hold. And so knowing your market is super important. Two ways that is especially important is know how much properties rent for and know how much properties sell for. So you have to know in the specific target area that you're looking for, how much properties rent and sell for, because that's what you're gonna be plugging into your analyzer. And if you have those wrong, everything else is gonna be messed up. So that's number one. Number two is buy right. If you overpay for a property or you misunderstand how much the rehab is gonna be, then all the numbers are off again. So purchasing right. One of the ways you can do that is getting really good with our cash flow analyzer. I'll throw it up on the screen right here, but just looking at multiple properties and just going over the numbers over and over and over again. You're not just gonna look at one property and be an expert and be perfect. Getting really good at buying comes with repetition. So even if you're not purchasing the property, analyzing properties over and over, and then you'll be able to buy right. And when that property pops on the market or that wholesaler sends you a listing, you're gonna know right away, oh, it's a good property. But if you don't have the reps, you might miss those. The people that are really good and really successful at purchasing profitable rental properties do it over and over and over again and so right away, when they see 10 properties, they can go, oh, I think those two are gonna be good deals, even without using a cash flow analyzer. And then they'll dive even deeper to go, do I really wanna purchase this property? Does it hit my numbers? The last one is if you've done that, you purchased right, the big one here is screening right. And what I mean by screening right, so this is number three, is screening your tenants. So you might be doing it, you might hire a property manager to do it, but even if you hire a property manager for the first time, second time, you wanna be looking over how they're screening your tenant. If you know your market, so you know your rents, know your sales price, you know the comps in the area, and for this one, I know that the in unit right down the street sold for two, it was either 235 or 245. We purchased this one for 127. So we have a room of margin of profit there. Even if we know the market and we purchase the property great, if we put in a crappy tenant, all of our hard work is for nothing. So super important to screen the tenant and screen right. One of the main things I'm looking for is does that tenant have any other evictions on their record? If they have any evictions, even if it was five, seven, 10 years ago, I don't wanna deal with them. Usually humans are habitual creatures. So if they've been evicted once, it's very likely that they will be evicted again or be some sort of a nuisance to your rental property and ruin all your profits. So that is the big thing that I look for. I also look for rental history. So if they list their previous addresses, which they should, if they don't, it's a red flag, you want to see people that are staying in a property for more than one year. You don't want somebody that in their past three year rental history have stayed one year every single year, because that means you're automatically going to be having a vacancy in a year because they're probably going to do what they've always done. This goes back to humans being habitual, tenants being habitual. We do the same thing usually repetitively. And I also look in addition to evictions, in addition, to rental history, I look at job history. You wanna see a longer job history than just six months, three months, less than a year. That shows that they're not gonna have a stable job history. Either they're job hopping or they're just lazy, they're losing their job or something else is gonna go on. And when I see that, those are my three big ones that I look for. When I see those things, 
usually those are red flags and usually I want to find a better tenant. When we have tenants to stay a short amount of time, you're going to have almost a built-in vacancy because whenever a tenant moves out, you're going to have to do something, whether it's a final clean, whether it's painting. I'm sorry, there's a saw going on in the background, which is a good thing. The guys are finishing up on the property and I'll show you that in a second. But when you have people that don't stay for a long time, you're gonna lose out on profits. You're looking for tenants that are gonna stay for a long period of time. If a tenant stays for five or seven years, my profits are gonna go way up. You don't wanna have tenants that come in for one year or worse, less than one year. That is gonna eat into your profits and you're not gonna have a profitable rental. So if you're looking at those screening things, i.e. evictions, i.e. rental history, i.e. job history, those are your big things. And you should even dive deeper and make sure everything on their rental application adds up, make sure it makes sense, and make sure to follow up with their employer and their previous landlord. So a lot of times we skip that, but again, that's part of the screen process. And if you don't screen right, you might just throw away all the hard work that you just put in, knowing your market, and then buying right. And if you do all those three things, you're more likely to buy and rent houses for a profit. So let me show you what's going on in our rental. I'm gonna take off this thing. I'll show you what's going on here real quick. We are coming up to a punch out list on this rental, but this one's in Baltimore. Baltimore City is a solid market for us as an investor. We have a great uh, contracting team. And this is what's going on. This is 772. Dr. Benjamin Coral's place in Baltimore, Maryland. I want to say 21201. Don't quote me on that zip code. We did all the floors here, the kitchen cabinets, the granite countertops, new appliances. Redid some boards, the boards around the edge. It's got a nice walkout deck and this nice island feature that you can put um, bar chairs. But if you find areas that you like, that you feel comfortable with, that's when you're going to find rental properties that um, you can buy for a profit. But this is an area that, that I really like that I think has, has room to appreciate. So we're actually getting some of the final clean done to this property. There's the bathroom, we did the tile there. And this is the master for this, uh, for this property. <laughs> and a huge thing for renting and purchasing uh, profitable rentals is you want a really good layout. I mean, it's not one of those big things that I talk about, but it is really important to have a good layout. So this one has a great layout. It's got three bedrooms upstairs. Um, it's got a master bathroom that people really like. So just think about what you like when you're renting a property. You like for you to have your own bathroom that you don't have to use the guest bathroom. So if you're purchasing a three, one, Think about it, there's only one bathroom in the house. Everybody has to use the same. And sorry, there's lots of sawing going on. It's always a good thing. But this is a basement we finished off. Um, you have a washer and dryer in here. And this is the fourth bedroom. So we like to install bedrooms um, if we can. Purchase four bedrooms. Uh, let's go outside real quick. Just check the outside. There's the outside, a little alleyway. Um, we like to purchase the bigger bedroom properties because it gives us a competitive advantage against other investors. So there's so many properties that are two bedrooms in Baltimore and we wanna be on the competitive side and not have a ton of competition to deal with. So if you're purchasing bigger bedroom properties, you have less competition because there's a supply and demand effect there where there's less supply of four bedroom houses than there are two bedrooms. So we purchase bigger properties to be more competitive and to command higher rents than the smaller properties with a smaller supply. So we have a greater demand that searches out our properties, both in rental to create a property that you profit off more, but also in sale where there's less properties that sell that are four bedrooms than our three bedrooms and that's why we added that bedroom in the basement because we probably went from about $1,700 a rent to about $2,000 in rent so we 
basically create an extra $300 by just adding that bedroom in the basement. So just different things that you can do to boost your profits up on rentals. Hope you guys find value in that video. Give our video a like, give it a subscribe, and I'll see you on the next one.